Mirror Division, with evocative regimental names like Puna Horse, 57th Frontier Force Rifles, Jodhpur Imperial Lancers. The French welcomed them like heroes. They were rushed forward to the front, but units were broken up. Men were separated from the main force and sent wherever they were most needed. The commander of the Indian Corps, as were all the senior officers, was British and white. As the war went on, he chronicled the triumphs and the anguish he shared with the Indians. Lieutenant General Sir James Wilcox published his account of the war in 1920. Asia had dropped into Europe and come to fight the Huns on the historic plains of Flanders. The man must have been made out of wood who would not have rejoiced at his good fortune. The heart atrophy that did not beat faster at the thought that he was given the chance, however humble, of taking his share in the greatest conflict of all time. Wilcox sent his men into these tranquil fields to fight. The Indians were confined to a line just north of Lille, near the Belgian border, on a front covering about seven miles. For over 13 months, the men went into the same old trenches and returned to the same village, until many of them probably believed it was all or a greater part of the entire British line. It was the dark days of 1914, when our men had to face mortar, hand grenades, high explosive shells, with which they themselves were not provided. They could reply only with their valor, their rifles, and two machine guns per battalion. And yet they did it. The so-called Western Front became a continuous complex of mile after mile of ditches, stretching from the North Sea coast to Switzerland. When the Germans found they could march no more in their sweep across France, they just dug themselves in and set up their machine guns. The Indians had been trained for the climbs of the east, for skirmishing with wild tribesmen. They had never seen a war such as this. The German is very strong. His ships sail the clouds and drop shells from the sky. His mines dig up the earth and his hidden craft strike below the sea. Bombs and blinding acid are thrown from the trenches. He has countless machine guns, which kill the whole firing line when in attack. The German is very strong. Zeppelin. Land mining and the blowing up of sepoys located in trenches. Liquid fire that causes the clothes around the body to burn. Such are the modern and scientific processes by which nations seek to destroy one another. Day and night the firing goes on. The nights are rendered like the day by light. I am unable to fathom this war. The fighting is not in the open, but inside the earth which has been dug into. Such a war has never occurred before, and that it may never occur again is my prayer. The first Indian units to see action were near Ypres in Belgium. Through the Menin Gate, the men wound their way to the front. Between October the 24th and November the 1st, 1914, the Indian battalion suffered 705 casualties, or practically the strength of a whole battalion. Thousands and hundreds of thousands of soldiers have lost their lives. If you go on the field of battle, you will see corpses piled upon corpses so that there is no place to put hand or foot. Men have died from the stench. No one has any hope of survival. 
For back to Punjab will go only those who have lost a leg or an arm or an eye. The whole world has been brought to destruction. known to the men as wipers. Set in the flatlands of Flanders, Ypres had the misfortune to be surrounded by a group of ridges which saw some of the bloodiest fighting of the war as the two sides struggled to gain the high ground. The son is very lucky who will see his father and mother again. The bullets and cannonballs come down like snow. The mud is up to a man's middle. Do not think that this is war. This is not war. It is the ending of the world. This is just such a war as was written in the Mahabharata by our forefathers. Greet my dear mother and say to her that her dear son, whom she reared with so much pain and trouble, is lying in a far country. Let her fall before the seat of the All-Merciful and pray that I may see her, and that she may see me once again. For the war is very terrible. Men are dying in their thousands, whose burial and funeral rites are performed by no human hand. Thousands of men huddled in their holes for months living and dying in a wilderness of trenches, shattered villages, and forests of lifeless tree stumps. Between October the 25th, 1914, and the 10th of March the following year, there were only 18 dry days, and on 11 of these, the temperature was below freezing. How many men have been killed? In some companies, there are only 20 or 30 left. The airplanes are like the great bird of Vishnu hovering over the earth. And cannons and bombs fire without ceasing. The rain is like the monsoon. The sun is never seen for a moment. Day and night, the firing goes on. How can a man be saved? Eep became known as the graveyard of the old British army. 100,000 names are recorded at the men in gate. In the first battle for Ypres, 58,000 British were lost. They died facing odds of 7 to 1. The Allies held Ypres. They forever ruined German hopes of outright victory. But at unimaginable cost. In the first days of the battle, the 129th Baluchis and the 57th Rifles lost half their British officers. The Gurkhas lost over 600 men in one German assault. A platoon of Dogras died fighting to a man. Rather than be taken, the last man left alive shot himself with his last cartridge. The morale of the Indians cracked. Nobly, the gallant Indians did their duty, but the tempest was on them and the British officers were practically blotted out. Now the Indians were fast losing those officers who understood them and who made trusted beyond all things. And for the strangers, there were none who could speak their language or understand them. There are three tasks in November of 1914 that the British have to deal with. The first one is to replace the officers. In an Indian Army regiment, uh, we're really talking a battalion, of course, on the line, there are 12 British officers. Now, you lose 12, doesn't seem like a lot of people to replace, but if you insist they know the language and are familiar with the culture, and they've got to be British gentlemen on top of that, then you've really got a problem finding enough officers. The second thing you've got to do is replace the men. Some of these regiments have lost well over half their strength by this time. The third thing you've got to do is try and rebuild the morale of the units, and that perhaps is the most difficult thing of all. No one has greater admiration for the Indian soldier and officer when he lives up to it than I have. He is generally brave, nearly always loyal, but he is seldom, if ever, fit to replace a British officer. 
Immediately you touch on